Hi, it's Jason Heath, and I'm here to talk to you about why I like using the George Vance Progressive Repertoire Method for double bass beginners. I've been teaching bass over 20 years, and I've tried so many different things with students. I've used all sorts of different scale systems, method books like Samandel, Belay. I've created my own exercises. I've used all kinds of different pieces. I've experimented a lot, and there's nothing I've found that I like better, especially for starting students, than Progressive Repertoire by George Vance. And if you don't know much about George Vance, he took the teachings of Suzuki and the Suzuki method and incorporated it into the Raboth technique system and position system in this brilliant amalgam that is so successful for young students. So I'm here to share today my top five favorite things about teaching progressive repertoire to double bass beginners. Number one, it starts students at the neck block. And this was something that I really resisted at first. I was very unsure about this. This isn't the way I was taught. It's not the way my teachers were taught. And it just seemed odd to not start in first position. It's called first position, right? But after experimenting, I realized the benefits of starting there at the neck block and how it helps shape the hand position. And it's a, just a great starting spot. The position isn't as wide as first position, and it's so much easier to transfer from there back to the lower positions than vice versa. Number two is working with pentatonic scales and wide intervals. And this is a major benefit of starting at the neck block. All of a sudden, you have a pentatonic scale under your hand, and that gives you access to so much great melodic material. It's easier to hear for a student, it's easier to tune, it's easier to play, and it's more fun. And more fun translates to more enthusiasm, more interest in practicing, all good things early on. Number three is how it introduces the entire range of the bass early on. And this is a direct result of the Raboth position system. Vance starts in the neck block, moves on to first position, and then gets the student into the thumb positions very quickly. And this eliminates that fear factor of playing up high. Really, if you look at it, playing up in thumb position should be easier than playing in first position for so many reasons. And it makes it accessible, it creates a parallel base up there where first position and fourth position, Raboth technique, the first thumb position, where they're mirror images. And Vance focuses on taking pieces and putting them in both positions like that. Wonderful way to teach early bass. Number four is putting the focus on the pieces rather than on technique. And this is a trap that bass players fall into so frequently, is focusing on exercises to the detriment of playing melodies. And that's not how other instruments start. They start by playing melodies. And I love that that's a major focus, in fact, the major focus of the Progressive Repertoire series. Number five is the logical sequence that Vance takes students through. Shorten and bread all the way to the first one of the Dragon Eddie Concerto. You always know what the next concept is that you're working on. And you know what you need to learn. It's very clear and it's sequential, step-by-step, -step, logical learning. And it's so much better than what I used to do when I would give a student a piece and then realize, oh no, I hadn't taught the technique yet and have to backtrack or I have to do some remedial teaching. And it's such a logical way to teach the bass. And I've had so much more success once I got on board and started going through this sequence of pieces. Now, obviously, I teach a lot of other things besides progressive repertoire. I think of that as the scaffolding for my teaching for young students. But I'm working on jazz. I'm working on their orchestra music. I'm working on other exercises. I'm working on what that particular student needs. I see a need, and I create some exercises or go through my archive. So I'm, of course, tailoring to every student, and we're working on other things. But I have found it to be such a great framework for teaching. And if you'd like to see what else I use, ContrabassConversations.com slash teaching has all the materials that I've used over the years and that I continue to recommend. And I'd love to have you join in this global conversation that we bass players are having. Subscribe to the podcast, ContrabassConversations.com slash subscribe.